R2 things. <clears throat> We're going to do a very little bit of chapter 12. It's entitled Analysis of Variance. Okay, so we'll do a little bit of that. <clears throat> and then we're also going to jump uh, to chapter 13. And we're going to do a little bit of chapter 13. And chapter 13 is entitled Correlation and Linear Regression. Right, so those are the two things that we will be doing uh, today. <clears throat> and so um, chapter 12 topics are analysis of variance. And so we're going to be comparing variances in this chapter. <clears throat> and as we all know that variances are a squared term, and so variances are always positive. If you take a look at the handout that I gave a couple weeks back, <clears throat> and it related to the test statistic for um, independent populations. There were two T tests. There were two T test statistics. And one of the T test statistics was to be used when it's assumed that variances were equal. Then there was another T test statistic to be used if it was assumed that variances were unequal. Everybody remember those two T test statistics that were calculated different ways at different degrees of freedom depending upon whether or not we had <clears throat> unrelated populations with equal variances or unrelated populations, populations with unequal variances. So that was one of the uh, parts of the handout. And so, as I said before, in looking at those two test statistics, it depended upon whether or not we assumed unequal variances or equal variances. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to test whether or not we have equal variances versus unequal variances. And if you have equal variances, then you use that test statistic. If you have unequal variances, then you use the other test statistic that was to be used with unequal variances. Okay? <clears throat> okay, and so uh, when we test variances, what do we do? We run a hypothesis test. Very similar to running hypothesis tests or means. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, test variances. <clears throat> and in testing variances, you have all the same steps. <clears throat> so the first step in the hypothesis test for variances is H sub O, H sub 1. What's the null hypothesis? It's sigma 1 squared, because sigma squared is a variance. <clears throat> is it equal to sigma 2 squared? And so if that's the alternate hypothesis, I'm sorry, if that's the uh, uh, null hypothesis, what's the alternate hypothesis? The alternate hypothesis is that sigma 1 squared is not equal to sigma 2 squared. So these are very similar to the hypothesis test that we ran for the means. And so if you accept HO, let's say you go through the whole test and it says accept HO, the assumption is that the variances are equal, and so when you test the means, and you come to the test statistic, if it's a T, you use the T where it's assumed that the variances are equal. Okay? So that's the process that we go through in order to determine which test statistic to use when we're testing means of unrelated populations. <clears throat> the second step in the hypothesis test is alpha. <clears throat> and the way the book is set up, uh, I think there's only two tables in this book here where they have um, alpha is equal to uh, 0.02, I think, and 0.10, I believe. But we'll get to those. We'll get to that in a second. All right, we'll get to the uh, table in a second. And what's the third step in an hypothesis test? Take a sample. Okay, so we'll take a sample. <clears throat> and so actually it's going to be take samples because we have two population variances here. And so we'll end up with uh, sample size one <clears throat> and a sample size two. <clears throat> 
and whatever it equals, that's what it equals. And so, what do you think the statistic is going to be when you take your sample? The statistic is going to the statistics that come out of the sample are going to be the sample variances. So when you take your sample, you have to know how to calculate a sample variance. Okay? In order to do the calculation. And they come out to be whatever they are based on the data that you have. <clears throat> and so one of the bigger differences in testing variances is that you don't have a Z or a T distribution, you have what they call an F distribution. <clears throat> And an F distribution looks something like this. This is a zero. Now, why would this be a zero for an F distribution? You know, you're dealing with positive numbers? Yeah, you're dealing with positive numbers because remember, we're testing variances and it's all squared terms are positive. And so, if there's a constraint here on the distribution to zero, meaning it can't be below zero, that means that this distribution is not going to be normal, it's going to be skewed. And it's going to be skewed to the right. And so it looks a little like this. That's what an F distribution looks like. Not exactly normal, it's skewed a little to the right. So this is what the F distribution will look like. Zero out to F, skewed to the right. Okay. <clears throat> and so, um, the test statistic then is going to be an F instead of a Z or a T. So, the F is the test statistic. <clears throat> That's a pretty simple calculation. It's equal to S squared H over S squared L, where H is the higher or the larger sample variance and L is the lower sample variance. <clears throat> and if the higher variance, now remember they're both positive, so if the higher variance is always on the top versus the bottom, when you reduce this to a whole number or whatever, what's the constraint over here as it relates to F? If the larger variance is in the numerator, it has to be greater than one. Has to be equal greater than or equal to one. Okay, so when you do your F, remember that F is going to be greater than or equal to one. Why is it greater than or equal to one? Because the higher one always goes in the top. In the, in the numerator. Okay? <clears throat> and because of that, this textbook has a different way to present F's critical values than other textbooks. Other presentations of this F is not necessarily this restriction up here. <clears throat> if you're in a different textbook, they give you a different um, setup for the test statistic. The way we present it here in this text, you have to present it where um, the higher sample variance is on the top, the lower sample variance is on the, on the bottom. That forces F to be greater than 1, and then you can use the table, because this table is set up where F is always greater than 1, greater than or equal to 1. Okay? <clears throat> and then, what's the uh, fifth step in the hypothesis test? It's the decision rule. So, what I'll do is... <clears throat> There's the F, <clears throat> and because <clears throat> it's always greater than 1, <clears throat> then we're going to have always just, uh, well, I shouldn't say that, <clears throat> but this will be the, um, okay, in, in this case right here, <clears throat> if we have, this is the setup. Is this a one or a two-tailed test? Two. This is a two-tailed test. And so what that means is, is that this would be accept HO. This would be reject HO. 
accept H1, and this would be reject HO, accept H1. Knowing that because F is always greater than 1, it's always going to be on the right side, even though this is a two-tailed test. <clears throat> and so, what would be the area in this tail, given that it's a two-tailed test? It would be alpha divided by 2. And this would be alpha divided by 2. And then, what's the sixth step in the hypothesis test? Make the decision. How does the test statistic F fit into the decision rule? <clears throat> and this would be a critical value here. Critical value over here, two on the left, but because the way we forced it, where f is always greater than or equal to one, we don't really care about this critical value because this is less than one. <clears throat> so we have to keep really have to care about this positive critical value <clears throat> that's greater than one. <clears throat> we should say one thing here that as it relates to degrees of freedom, there's degrees of freedom in the numerator. And there's degrees of freedom in the denominator. <clears throat> so if this were if this were 10, let's say, and this were 30, and let's say that s is equal to uh, I don't know, let's say as it relates to degrees of freedom in the numerator. What's this variance? 10. Ten. 30 is the sample size. So how many degrees of freedom are in the numerator? 29. 29. Right, so there'd be 29 degrees of freedom in the numerator. The lower one is the eighth. That had 10 observations in the sample, so there'd be nine degrees of freedom in the denominator. Everybody see that? And so if you look at the table of F distributions, which is on page Race to find who can get it first. <laughs> Here, so page 768, 769. Yep, because the, the, if you look at uh, page 768, 769, this is these are the only two F distribution tables presented by the book. And so, if you look over on page 768 at the top, what does it say? 100%. It says critical values of the S distribution at the 5% level of significance. The next page is the critical values of the F distribution at the 1% level of significance. Now remember, the way the presentations are made here, it's always the colored area. In this case, it would be the brown area. And because, remember, this is a two-tailed test where alpha is equal to 0 0.10. What's the area here? 0 0.05. What's the area over there? 0 0.05. Okay, so if this were the test, we'd be on page 768 to get the critical value. Okay, because this would be 0 0.05 over here. And so what's the critical value? Well, you have to know how many degrees of freedom there are. 
And so when you go to this table, it says at the top, degrees of freedom in the numerator. Everybody see where it says degrees of freedom in the numerator? How many degrees of freedom do we have in this numerator? 29. And so we would use 30. Everybody see the 30? How many degrees of freedom in the denominator? Nine. We have nine degrees of freedom, so what's the critical value? 2.86. Everybody see the 2.86? Yeah. Okay, so this would be 2.86. So that's the critical value, 2.86. And uh, what would you do? How do you make the decision? Well, whatever this came out to be, plug it into the decision rule. And so, what is it in this case? What is the test statistic here? What is the higher value for the sample variance? It's 10 divided by 8, and that's a 1.25. Right? Uh, do we have to square those? I'm sorry, what? Do we have to square those before? Like, uh, no, well, well. 30 squared. No, I squared. Yeah, okay. no, because now remember, uh, when you do your sampling and you calculate your statistics <laughs> knowing that the test statistic has the variance in the numerator and a variance in the denominator okay. then you take the variances now if they said to you in the in the um, in an example <clears throat> that n is equal to thir uh, n1 is equal to 10 and n2 is equal to 30 and the sample standard deviation is 5 okay. then you take S sub 1 is 5, but you have to square it to put it in the test statistic. Okay? So if they give you the standard deviations, you have to square it. If they give you the variances, then you just place it in there. Okay? Now this is a variance test, and so that's why the F is made up of variances, and that's why the, uh, you have an F distribution, because this distribution is skewed because of the zero constraint on the uh, lower side of the... Of the um, Test statistic. Okay, so what would it be in this case? 1.25. Where does 1.25 fit? Except HO. And because we accept HO, that the variances are equal, when you run your hypothesis test on the means, see that's another thing, when you do this calculation right here. In order to calculate S, you also have to calculate X bar 1 and X bar 2. Whatever they equal. And so, you can do all the tests, the F test and the T test, based on the same samples. So technically, what you do is you do this one first. Then you either accept equal variances or not. Then you run the test on mu. And when it comes to the test statistic as to which T, you use the T based on whether or not you accepted or rejected HO. Okay? Everybody understand that? Right. <clears throat> so, that's analysis of variance. Anybody have any questions on analysis of variance? What, as we look here in the textbook, we see a few things. If you open up to that page, uh, the, uh, No, no, uh, page, four, four, uh, page 410, this is analysis of variance. <clears throat> and it talks about the F distribution, and they show you a family of Fs, where as, this, as degrees of freedom increase, the, the distribution gets a little more drawn out to the right, a little less skewed. Comparing two population variances, right there on page uh, 412, you see the test statistic for comparing two variances. And then on page 413, if you go down three lines, it says in order to reduce the size of the critical uh, table of critical value. See, that's, that's the reason why our presentation is this way. Whereas in other statistic textbooks, it doesn't matter which one's on top, which one's on the bottom. Because of this sentence right here, it says the terms um, S1 squared and S2 squared are the respective sample variances. If the null hypothesis is true, the test follows a uh, F distribution with N minus 1 and N minus 2 degrees of freedom. Then it says, in order to reduce the size of the table of critical values, the larger sample variance is placed in the numerator. 
So for this presentation in this book, they tell you, look it, if you want to use our F distribution tables, then you have to set it up this way, where the higher one is on the top, the lower one's on the, on the bottom, that forces F to be greater than one, and then you can use our table that's presented here, because F is always going to be greater than one, and we really don't have to ever care about this left um, uh, uh, region, the rejection region, because of the way the table's presented. Okay, in order to be somewhat consistent with the way that we've done it in the past, if alpha is equal to 10, <clears throat> and this is a two-tailed test, you should put half the alpha over here, half alpha over here, that would make this a 0.05, then you can use that table because that table is 0.05 in the right table. Everybody follow that? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> So it's just for presentation purposes that they've restricted it to this. As I said, in other, uh, other statistics courses, there's no restriction. And they just give you four pages of tables, five pages of tables. <clears throat> but they want to cut down on the presentation, which, which is fine with me. I think this is an okay way to do it, too. And as it says here, the, the largest sample variance is placed in the numerator. Hence, the tabled F ratio is always larger than one. Thus, the right critical value is the only one required. I mean, so if you read this little phrase here, that tells you why we're making the presentation this way. Okay, All right? If this were if this were the test, if we have we haven't we at the moment we have no need to test this. Greater than or equal to versus less than, because our own our need only is to. Um, is to answer the question, should we assume equal variances or not? And this is for hypothesis testing of the mean as it relates to which t is the test statistic. But if you go on any further in statistics, you may want to uh, run a test as to whether or not the variances are less. One is less than the other. If you do it this way, is this a one or a two-tailed test? <coughs> 